What's up and welcome to Rad Potential. <laughs> What's up? What's up and welcome to Rad Potential. We're working on the 2002 again. Carly's in the garage. I'm in the garage. My name's Justin. We're working on a 2002 Ew, named Marge. You, you, no, Come on, it was like a funny thing and now you ruined it. Oh. Anyway, that's what we're doing today. And we have uh, another over set of overhaul parts. So a package that we've been waiting for for weeks finally showed up and we have cooling system stuff. So we got silicone hoses. These are Ireland engineering hoses. I don't know. We'll see how I feel about everything. It took forever for this stuff to come. So knock one against them. We'll see how the quality of their stuff comes in. But we got a whole every hose kit, a thermostat, water pump, new hose clamps, and a new radiator cap. Um, we knew we wanted to do all the hoses just because they're old as whatever. Again, the car was sitting for 15 years. So this is just part of the refresh is going through all the hoses and whatnot. And then uh, figure while we're in here, we might as well do a water pump. I ordered a water pump and a thermostat. And in our starting and test driving that you've already seen, um, the water pump started pissing coolant. So glad we ordered it. And it's been sitting here waiting for this package to show up. So we are going to maybe jack up the car, maybe not. We'll see what we can do. Get the radiator out, drop all this stuff out of here and start putting it all in and then uh, maiden voyage of, well, I'm not gonna say maiden voyage. We've already driven it, but we're gonna actually get it to the BMV and get it titled now, which we're stoked on because it'll actually be able to run for a while, get up the temperature, we can take down the road and start putting some serious miles on this thing. We got, I haven't shown these yet, fresh kicks. We got new rubber on the BBS E21 wheels, which we're stoked on. I think it looks so sick. Good. So I, and I showed it in the beginning, but I'll show you again with Carly and Conan in the clip. Anyway, yeah. looking really good. We're super excited about it. So follow along as more uh, refresh happens to the 2002 affectionately named Marge. So step one in this refresh, we're gonna do the water pump. So to do that, we need to start taking off hoses and get the radiator out of the way. Both of these top hoses, we'll take the old thermostat off right here. We will unbolt the radiator which looks to be some bolts here on either side we'll pull the radiator out drain all the coolant and then we'll be able to reach or we'll pull the fan off the front undo the belts that is mega loose um and then we'll get to the water pump right there in the front of the motor and then after we do that we'll check back in and find all the homes for our new hoses that we got sitting on the bench over there what's wrong with you what? Hey. She's a little brat. So we just filmed all this on time lapse, so we're gonna retry. Um, but a whiff. oh, I already emptied some of it out. But we pulled the radiator hose off, and we're greeted with this like sandy gunk mixture in the hoses. Um, now, so where we are so far, when we like we're getting it started, it was just like dry. So we just dumped water and a little bit of coolant in it, um, just to get some fluid flowing through it. Now that we got the hoses, we're gonna flush it and try to get all this crap out of it. And we're still going to, but we're draining the radiator. And as you can see, it's brown nastiness. Um, but 
I'd like to point out this radiator is way heavier than it should be for the size and it being empty and no more water coming out. And we looked inside and like I said, I already cleared some of it out, but it is full of that sandy gunk. Um, so this operation tonight may have gotten delayed a little bit. We're probably not going to get this put back together tonight because we're going to make sure that this gets properly cleaned before we put it back together. Um, and or pick up a new radiator. Um, we'll probably see what we can do about cleaning this first. Whether blast the hose or the power washer through it. Because I'd rather not buy a new radiator. But there's no way we can use it like this. There's no point in putting it back on. I might also explain like we, why we barely put any in there and it was... Yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't know what the capacity was. I didn't like measure it when we put it in. But we didn't put a lot of water in, you're right. And that's for sure why. Because it's absolutely packed full of gum. Yeah. There was like a half inch thick layer of just yeah. soot just sitting you right here. You can see it on the edge of this. It was like only like half of the hole was plugged with sooty, rusty gunkness. So that's where we are. Where we are. Um, we'll carry on trying to clean this stuff out. Oh, and changing the water pump. We still gotta get, get to there, so carry on. As you saw, I got the water pump off and it was a little bit more of a pain um, as you saw, but look how nasty this thing is. Gasket is trash, obviously, but this thing is the stuff growing on it. It's gross. Um, but it was more difficult than I hoped because I, re I read about this too um, in preparation. Um, but as you can see, let me put this light down. I can manage how to work right here is this AC bracket so here's the AC compressor there's this big metal bracket that um, goes down the side of the engine over here and in the front of the motor it's got this welded flange over here some people talk about just cutting it off I didn't want to do that straight away and you're able to slowly spin the water pump this way and then I was able to pull it out um, going back in I found an old um, roundel post or a post on the 2002 FAQ, the, the basically the 2002 forum. One second. Found a post in the 2002 forum that posted a roundel um, column from like the from '83 or something, where they talked about um, shaving down this edge of the water pump. So you can see this is all just, it's a, not all, but it's, there's a pretty thick piece of the casting over here. And if you shave down these bolts, like the outside of these bolt sides, then you can slide it in on that bracket without tearing your gasket um, on the way back in. So I think I'll do that. I'll get the like flapper disc out and work that down a bit before I slide it back on. And you can see right here, be able to slide that in um, without messing up this bracket. However, I also read of people that just lopped that corner of the bracket off and ran that for the past 40 years and have had no issues. So if it gives me any trouble getting that um, water pump in there and I think I'm gonna tear the gasket because I only have obviously one gasket with my water pump, I'm gonna tear it, then I'll just uh, maybe lop that piece off. We'll see, we'll see. All right, we've got the uh, radiator out in here in the yard. Got the hose that sets you up on top of the 21. Oh, this might not work. See if we can flush any water through here and uh, water the lawn a bit.
Well, I'm a little wet, but I'd say that was mildly, mildly successful. Um, at first, I don't know if you could tell, if you could see close enough, but a bunch of brown, nasty water was coming out. And uh, by the end of it, it was flowing pretty good of clear water. It's still pretty heavy. I'm sure there's still some water and some, maybe a little bit of that sediment crap sitting in it. But it's for sure gonna be better than it was, so. All right, now we're gonna try to flush the block. So I pushed the car back a little bit. So it's closer to the drain, because I'm probably gonna spill and clean my, wash my floor. And because the hose isn't quite long enough to make it all the way up there. So what we've done here is put this, one of these top hoses back on. We're gonna, actually I should just clamp that or I'll hold it. We're gonna pinch that off, sorry I wasn't showing it. And we're gonna launch hose water into here and watch all the crappy nasty water come out of the water pump spot. Hopefully we can catch most of it in our drain pan and the rest of this nasty rusty water will find its way to the drain. So let's see how we can do this here. See the nasty stuff come out down here and we're gonna spray it in right here. Well, it's working. It started to come out pretty clear. I'm gonna do this for maybe a minute or two. I think I really caught almost all of it, but I might've gone a little too long cause uh, that's full of nastiness and it's about to spill over. Anyway, that was pretty successful. Um, it was flowing clear water for a solid 30 seconds or so, so I'm probably gonna drain that and do that one more time. Um, make sure I get a good full flush. So after a bit of thinking, I think I'm gonna cut off that um, AC bracket and here's why. I kinda tried to test fit the water pump and how much I'd have to cut off of it and it just didn't seem like a good idea. So if the water pump is un is behind that bracket and you try to bolt it in through that bracket and you've shaved down the edge of the water pump, those bolts are gonna have no clamping force on the water pump to seal it up. And that seems like a bad idea. And then looking at this um, bracket, it's huge, it's bolted to the side of the motor over here. It's like a quarter inch steel. And like, I'm, I'm shaking this without um, those I'm not showing you. I'm shaking the bracket, trying to bend it, move it without these bolted in as it would be, you know, if I cut that off and it, it won't even budge. So I'm going to lop that off. It'll be much easier to do the water pump this time and for the future times that we own this car. Um, so I'm just going to grab my cutoff wheel and cut it um, right down this weld here and then at the bottom and just chop this triangle piece off. So here's the finished product of what that looks like. Chop the bracket off, and just that triangle piece. And here's what it looks like now. I'm just gonna clean that piece up because it's got some jagged edges on it, but now I've got plenty of clearance. And as you can see, when I did that, I stuffed a towel in the uh, hold of the water pump so I didn't get any metal shavings in the motor, just to be safe. Um, but now that's gonna be way easier to do the water pump now and for the future and I'm excited about that. So the water pump goes on just like it came off. Um, this is how it sits looking at the front of the motor like this. Let me set it down here. So that's looking at the front of the motor. On the bottom, that's a little bit different, difficult to see. You've got these three bigger long 13 nuts and these two are the ones that go behind that bracket that I just cut off 
Then you've got little 10 millimeters, one's longer than the other. The longer one goes here. You can see right under this pipe that goes under the intake manifold. It's got a little bit longer shoulder there. And then the other three, two little guys on top, one down here. And then uh, don't forget your new gasket or RTV, whatever you choose. I'm just gonna use a paper gasket, no RTV, and hopefully it seals up nice. If not, pull it off and maybe re-RTV it, but we're not gonna go there. Um, so yeah, you can watch me uh, stick back on. So the next things to do, next thing to do is uh, get all the new hoses on. So they just came in a bag of hoses. They're not labeled, um, which isn't that big of a deal, because we're just going to pull them off one by one and replace them. And I will show you what it looks like, and I'll try to be helpful. I'll show you what it looks like off the car, what the shape is, and where it goes as it goes in. Um, I'll just do little clips for each one. First one that I pulled off, it's like an L shape with a little bit of a bend in it. This came out of right here. I'll set it there so you see the shape. This side was plugged right into the bottom of the intake manifold and it goes up to the back of the water pump. So that's the shape of it. Come over here and it looks like this is the one to do it. So uh, we'll clean that one off and stick it back in there. This is the next one I pulled off. It's not too telling because that was just the scrap hose that we put under the uh, new fuel pump. But this is the one that goes under there. It's just a short little L and it goes right under the fuel pump here, connects to the this front mixing water neck and then right to the intake manifold underneath the carburetor. Here is your next one, little S-curve. There's what the new one looks like side by side. Um, one side is longer than the other. So I'll show you with the one that just came out. This goes from the back of the head to the heater core through the firewall here. Um, see there's a little hole and a grommet right here. And the, the long side is on top and goes through here to the heater core. And that grommet's tight, so you'll wanna take your hose clamp, put it on uh, the end of the bit like this, then stick your hose through and then clamp it on. You won't be able to shove this through that hole, obviously. So there's your next one. Here's where the next one is we're looking at back of the intake manifold down here and it goes through the firewall into the heater core this my piece here or our piece here oh i just flung rusty coolant all over yeah. my face looks like this oh, yeah. and the one that it's replacing is right here it looks like that don't mind the mess we haven't unpacked from the track day this weekend but for these last three hoses and the thermostat um, we needed to get the fan and the radiator in, which we haven't even put the radiator in yet. But we put the fan and this on. It was a pain in the butt to get the bolts through everything into the water pump, wasn't it? Oh yeah, and, and uh, we put this fan on probably four times before we kept remembering all the other things we needed to do. Yeah, we forgot the pulley and then we had to take it back alternator. off. And we forgot the alternator and then couldn't get the alternator bracket back on with the fan in place. So live and you learn. Put the alternator bracket back on if you took the alternator bracket off before you put the fan and the pulley back on. Now we're going to slot the radiator back in and then uh, show you which hose goes where on uh, the thermostat and the radiator hoses. So here's the bottom radiator hose and we are going to stick it on the radiator before we put the radiator in just because it'll be a lot easier that way. This bend goes down like this and it aims somewhere remotely up like this and that will go up here to the thermostat. So it turns out the radiator hoses aren't going to work. So the only, can, only thing I can think of is the previous owner may have told us that this radiator isn't a stock 2002 radiator. If you know better, let me know. It's got an outlet on the side of the bottom there and the top left there. Um, but the hoses that came with the factory, or the, it's supposed to be factory replacement hoses from Ireland Engineering, don't work. We've got this one down here. We've got the thermostat. That I know this little one goes to the water pump, but this is too short to reach to the thermostat, to this water neck, doesn't meet. And this one's like way long over here. 
So I think we're gonna have to use a hodgepodge. All right, uh, quick update. Went to the parts store, got a random hose. Where's the one that we just replaced? So just matched up a hose in the store. So we'll just lop this, this end of it off here and it's gonna work for us. So this one's gonna be here as we said and then we actually that's the only one we were going to need this one we're just going to be able to cut a little shorter to fit here we'll just cut like a inch off each side or half inch off each side and then the one down here at the bottom i'm just gonna have to cut a little bit off the side of the radiator um so that it doesn't hit the frame rail over here it just needs to get sucked in a little bit that way to the left so after I get this all, uh, I'll fit it up. I'll show you the finished product of all of our new hoses. All right, we got the cooling hoses done the other night. Um, as you can see, this was our one we picked up from the parts store. Um, honestly, I like the look of the normal hose better than this silicone shiny, but whatever, it'll do. This one cut down nicely. I actually cut the one we didn't use to me to use this short hose because the actual short one was too short and put it in a bad place. I um, had to trim this one down and uh, trim this one as well. But it all looks good and, and fits nice now. Um, last thing, we have a couple more quick fixes we're going to do. We'll wrap up this uh, little um, back to life video. We've got this filler neck that we got to slap in. Just four quick bolts. And then I'll show you here in a second. And we've got new plug wires from uh, Bimmer World. So we'll slap those in because if you remember or saw in one of the first ones, oh, see, it's it's falling out right now. This uh, third third plug is so um, worn, like the little connector on it, that like you tap it. Hopefully you saw that. You just sit here, it's, it's plugged in, not plugged in. So with how bad the engine mounts are in this car, the shaking of the motor could probably make that fall out. So we're gonna do that and the filler neck and then wrap this one up. Uh, the plug wires were quick and easy. I pulled off this little clip, stuck the new wires in, transferred this little holder to hold them. These wires are a little bit longer, so you can see they're kind of wound up a little bit, um, but just pull it out from the same one or pull them out one at a time, put the new one in the same spot. Um, the gas filler neck here in the back is also gonna be pretty easy. You can see clearly why we're replacing it. It's uh, pretty torn. We have gas all over the trunk. So there's four seven millimeters on this collar, um, this little fume hose, and then uh, a little flathead here that connects to the gas tank. So we'll zip those off and uh, swap it out. There we go, quick easy fix on this. Fresh gasket in there, no more spilling fuel. Now the last thing we need to do today is um, fill it up with coolant, make sure we got no leaks on all of our new hoses, and uh, take it for a drive and see how much better it feels to drive on fresh tires and the new wheels. Get some pictures outside because I'm excited to finally put some miles on this thing. So as you can hear, it's uh, idling now. Um, had two small issues. This hose on top of this uh, water neck thing um, wasn't quite tight and started leaking just as I was filling it up. So there's a little bit of water down there, but there's no new drips. So everything else is tight. I went back through, checked everything. It was pretty tight. Um, and then another issue, right when I first fired it up, the fan was actually clipping the radiator. So I had to pull off the radiator kind of readjust it or just like undo it readjust it and now it's clearing um, this is already overflowing now because this is up a little high but it hasn't sucked any water down yet so I guess now we got an active drip but that's just coming from the overflow because I don't have a bottle on here maybe I should put a bottle on there anyway I just need to get up the temperature so it'll suck down some coolant and I can top it back off because you see we're still, uh, there's, the engine's warm to the touch, but it's not hot yet. It's starting to rise now. 
so a little bit of update. I was getting up the temperature and uh, ran around the car looking at things and I peeked back inside and the temp gauge was pegged red. Shut it off, freaked out for a second. Um, came over here, was feeling the radiator hoses. The thermostat wasn't opening. Lower radiator hose was still cold. Um, so I grabbed my little meat thermometer. So I didn't want to take it all apart and test the thermostat outside of the car because I didn't want to drain all that fresh coolant I just put in. Um, so now I got this on the thermostat showing it it's getting up to right around where this thing should be opening so we should feel that ra lower radiator hose getting warm soon um i think the gauge is just a little wacky because as i ran a little more put the cap back on um the gauge is now centered so i think that gauge might have had an air bubble up here in the water neck or something but I think we're getting it figured out now. It appears we've sprung one more leak back here going to the heater core. Let me show you. It's not the hose we replaced, but the little hose after that little valve or whatever that is um, going to the heater core is leaking. So once this, uh, once this cools down, I'll uh, cut a new little piece of hose and get some new hose clamps on that one. So here's a little crafty, crap, broken piece that was leaking and some weird looking factory clamps that those are cut and broken now. See it in here? It's connecting this little valve to the rest of the heater core. Yep. And Just we cut little guy. another little guy that's hopefully gonna slide right on there. Um, hopefully it'll be easier to get it on than it was to get it off. Yeah, we'll use some WD, WD-40. Come look. I just put the light away. See if you can see it in there. Uh, a little bit, yeah. New hose, new clamps. Well, that's better. Used clamps, but new hose. Hopefully that doesn't leak. Um, it's cooled down a little bit, so I topped off the radiator with more coolant. Um, so we're gonna fire it back up now. Let it get back up to temperature and uh, make sure it holds temperature. And then, um, make sure it doesn't. Make sure leak. it's not leaking anymore. And then take it to the BMV. Ooh, baby. It's about to be ours officially. Officially. Nobody can steal it from us anymore. You drive it on the road. It's got insurance. It's got some cool shoes on. Long time coming. She's been sitting in our yard for a year. Killing our grass for a year. Killed our grass. So we are out on public roads out of our neighborhood. We uh, don't know what speed we're going, but I feel like we're going speed of traffic. Headed to the gas station and then to the uh, BMV. BMV, maker ours. I really need to adjust the throttle pedal. Yeah. It's not like really opening the throttle that much. Like, there's a switch to the floor, but it doesn't really rev above 3,500. <laughs> New tires are are nice and smooth. Any thirty six? I keep checking my mirrors that don't exist. We have zero mirrors in the car. We also have half of a. Let me backtrack. We have a third of a brake light. <laughs> Not even half. It's divided into like three sections. We have one tiny section. We're moving. Fourth gear. Look how fast we're it's going. Smooth, actually. It smoothed out a little bit. Yeah, it did. It had a little vibration around, I don't know, 20 miles an hour. Yeah, it feels a lot smoother at higher speed. Well, unsuccessful trip to the BMV. We made it all the way there. Successful for the car. It was a su su successful drive for the 2002, but um, all the systems were down at the BMV. So we're gonna have to go back tomorrow morning or another day. But that's gonna be it for this one. Um, still lots of sorting to do on this. Gotta dial in the throttle linkage so um, we can actually go full throttle. The shifter is so sloppy, it is the bushing I think is gone on the rear of the carrier that I think it's actually touching the drive shaft, 
when you shift kind of over into fourth gear, it ting ting tings on the drive shaft, and then the drive shaft might need rebuilt. It's got some vibration in it. Maybe I'll just do that and we'll do the five speed swap from the E21 um, I showed you guys sitting out here. Kind of that's kind of what we got it for. Who knows what else we'll do with it? If you have plans or ideas for this, let me know. But right now we're just gonna pull the five speed out of it and put it into this. Um, maybe we'll rebuild the drive shaft at that time. We gotta fix. I gotta figure out where the speedometer hooks up to because it's not working. Uh, maybe that's into the trans. I gotta look into it. Hopefully it's not the diff because I'm not changing that. I don't know. We'll see. Got some looking to do. Um, hope you're as stoked on this as we are. We're super pumped. The car looked really good out on the road. Um, and it's fun to get it up to speed. So thanks for following along and uh, keep it rad. No. Sad doggy. Is her sad doggy? Is her so sad? You're a sweet girl. Yes, you are. With your little paws all talked up, looking so cold and sad.